no idea how we already had orders and just started going it's grown exponentially and like you said within the first 12 months we hit 10,000 followers on instagram and well into six-figure business within 12 calendar months as well yeah so it was uh it's, it's blown up Thank you so much for coming on to um, share your experience with us, Tanya and Chris. Uh, you guys are from West Coast Convection, and you guys make some really bomb desserts. Okay, this is okay. This is how big this is of a muffin. <laughs> like, what is this? Tell me. Share with me what you guys do. Okay. Yeah. So we do um, massive blondies and brownies. We're known for making one pound minimum brownies and blondies, and we stuff them with all sorts of. Anything you think of. Pretty much anything. We love outrageous and decadent and the bigger, the better. Yeah. So <laughs> you can cute. definitely find, yeah. yeah, like you're going to find uh, like six to eight ounce cookies that we, we bake in house as well, shoved inside on top of um, donuts, candy, candy bars, pop tarts, anything you think of. Yeah. I love it. And to be honest with you, the reason why I reached out to you guys is because I see your, um, your Instagram. And it is very, very inspiring. What I was sharing with you earlier is that it's, you guys have so much passion, so much heart um, in what you guys are doing. And within a year and a half, you guys grew to over 10,000 subscribers on Instagram and is able to build something that you guys have like so much passion for. And it, it pours out and it shows you guys are super authentic. Can you share a little bit more about how you guys started this journey? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I actually, um, uh have had zero baking experience prior to this i owned a gym um and when that didn't really work out with my uh, partner at that time um tanya had convinced me to to leave that business which is something i'd spent a lot of time and uh, all my energies and efforts into for about eight years before that and uh we i personally had a lot of experience eating a lot of the treats that a lot of these online companies had made um, some of them I was blown away. Some of them I was very uh, underwhelmed with and kind of thought that maybe there was something that we could do better. And she had quite a bit of baking experience on her own, um, although she's an, uh, an RN, so completely different there <laughs> totally as well. And so one day we just decided we're going to go ahead and, and try to make something. And we made a blondie. Uh, and right away we knew that we had something. It was one of the best things that we'd ever had. Um, had some people taste it. They agreed with us and then um we just so happened to go visit my brother and went to a business conference that sort of gave us that little kick that we needed and just we created the llc got the website did all that in a couple days and then that was in uh september of 2019 and by the end of that month we already had orders somehow i don't know, I have no <laughs> idea how but we already had orders and it just started going it's grown exponentially and like you said within the first 12 months we hit 10,000 followers on instagram and um well into six figure business within 12 calendar months as well. Yeah. So it was, uh, it's, it's blown up in this kind of work. It's, you can't just go halfway, I think. And for us, especially when it's your, your side hustle, if you just make it a side hustle and you don't go all in, you can't, I guess in our experience, we had to just, I mean, 16 hour days working two jobs just to get this going. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we did what we could to, to really, take the time and investment to to make it i guess yeah bigger and, than we even expected it would ever be yeah just like you said, i mean it's yeah, it's challenging there's some long hours you know working seven days a week you know 60 70 hours so it's you know you gotta do what it takes mm -hmm. you, you know what let's unpack that a little bit more for our listeners because that was a lot of things that you guys shared so <laughs> yeah let's let's go back to the very beginning i, I love your story that you, you know what you tried the gym thing it didn't really work out registered nurse is registered nurse right yes Beautiful. I love that you guys are coming from such diverse background, yet it's you guys can make it happen. And it's definitely a huge risk. And, and what you guys have done is created a beta product, gave it to people that validated your idea. Mm -hmm. something that is different. And then you got inspiration, that final kick from someone at the trade show at your brother's place. And then you're like, you know what? Balls to the walls. Let's make yeah. it. Um, and you guys just took action, which is beautiful. When you guys took action, what was it like when, what were you guys feeling like? It's like, is it like, oh, you know what? I feel so much confident in this thing. Or it's just like, I don't know what's going to work, but I have belief, I have faith. I've been listening to all these inspirational things, but we just got to do it. So um, I think just kind of like what to touch on what you said earlier about bravery. And there's something that um, I repeat fairly often. I've 
written on our board right over here and it says that the life that you desire will absolutely take more courage from you. And I think that's the one thing that you've got to have is uh, courage. And that's, you know, in, in large amounts to get what you really want. Um, that in action, which kind of alleviates any fears that you have as well. And so I didn't really know what I was doing. She sort of knew what to do, but she was also working as an RN. And so we just started going. We just, you know, if you kind of fail forward, you're going to make some mistakes, but then you're going to be able to um, kind of act on those and iterate. And the whole thing is an iterative process, you know, just move forward with courage and you'll find your way as long as you're able to, to learn from your mistakes and, and not lose the enthusiasm. Yeah. So, and I think what the, the hard part was a little bit too, is it was a little mixed of both. Cause he said, you know, did we go in with full, full confidence or were we like, God, this isn't going to work. I think for, for me, I'm a little bit more practical. And there were times where I was like, Oh my gosh. But at the end of the day, it was always, no matter what, we were always super confident in our product. And we just said, if we can just get this right and figure out the, the rules, the regulations, the business aspect, we can, we, we knew we could do it no matter what, however hard it was. It was like that confidence was always absolutely there, yeah. which I think made a difference. And I think it's also just the, the confidence in yourself as a person, not necessarily in the process of what you're doing, but I think if you believe enough in yourself and you're um, resourceful enough, you know, that that's certainly helpful. And I was definitely confident in, in what we had as a, as a partnership for sure that, that mm-hmm. we're going to figure it out. Speaking of partnership, it's it's rare to be able to have such good chemistry between a partner like yourself and not have much conflict. Um, is Has it always been like that? Or was it like it takes some time to find out all the gears and stuff like that? Because I know for a fact that when my wife and I work on projects together, it never goes the right way. Like just planning for a wedding was was crazy because it's like I have a certain way of doing things. I I'm very conceptual. Uh, but for her, she needs things like laid out in front of her, like step by step. So then like, that was crazy. It's just to, <laughs> right. like, I can't imagine dealing with a business like, like yourself. Yeah. To be honest, we are so similar. I mean, down to the fact that we have the same exact birthday, <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> we are very, very similar in a lot of ways, but where one of us is say more confident in one area, the other one is less and, and vice versa. So I think that our balance is great um and so obviously with any partnership any business there are times where it gets stressful not at each other but just the business Mm. but i think for us we've been able to find that balance really well of how we mix and you know don't take things personal and then we i think we do a good job at separating our business and our personal life so for us anyway i for in my opinion (laughs) i think it's pretty pretty smooth yeah i would agree i think um there's definitely some level of luck to it and that you you find someone that just happens to complement maybe your your strengths or weaknesses in, in a sense that uh, you're not always butting heads and you tend to believe the same things in the same way um but i think one thing that separates this from past partnerships and relationship is is the communication and i think just the underlying level of love that we have is uh, significantly greater than either of us have experienced before and i think if you're able to build on that and maintain communication, it's it has been actually very easy, and it's and it's been, actually really fun. Yeah, too. it's it's uh, unlike anything that I've ever been a part of. That's for sure. And I yeah, think so. a lot of that's work, but a lot of it's luck. I think we have kind of the best of both worlds in that aspect. That is super inspiring to hear. Like I'm having goosebumps because you, you know it's no. Real. no for real though. Like it, it's something that I I personally am guilty of. Is like my wife always says that I don't communicate enough. And as guys, I feel like, oh, I'm, I'm just trying to avoid conflict. And mm-hmm. therefore, I don't want to talk about things that don't really matter, for, for lack of a better word. And therefore, lack of communication. And for you to actually pinpoint that communication as one of the key things that make this business relationship work, I, I truly, truly, um, yeah, that is very inspiring. Because even for my team, I'm always having problems, not problems, like I'm, I'm still working on this trade of mine. To become more communicative so thank you thank you for sharing something that um that really works and for people that are listening that have co-founders that have partners being able to communicate things and not take things personally is truly the the way to move forward in a business um and even for my partner um business partner brian um he, we are so in sync because he does the operational side of things and I'm very the conceptual guy. So our ways of, of, of doing things is just so different, but then there's the underlying um, trust that goes into this partnership. Um, so really, truly, thank you for sharing traits that yeah. make this relationship work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think um, just speaking from a, a male perspective as well, 
uh, communication isn't always my strongest point. I think having a partner that can kind of call you forward, I think is very important and sort of call you on your, on your BS. Um, but knowing that, you know, it's all from a place of love. And I think you have to, like you said, trust that your partner has your best interest at heart and the business's best interest at heart. So if there's a conflict that arises and your partner does call you for it and, Hey, look, you know, you're doing this, this, and you, you can't be doing that. It's for the betterment of you, the relationship. And then lastly, the business, because if you can't have the first two, you're not going to have the third one. So thank you. Thank you. That humbleness to learn, to listen uh, for guys. I'm not trying to generalize. I'm just feeling it for myself that it's, it's tough. Um, but the awareness to yeah. be able to, to take that run with it, trust in the process. Kudos to you, Chris. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful stuff. I think that's a gem that a lot of people need to listen to, especially from the male perspective. Um, cool stuff. So when you guys began, you're like, hey, you know what? Within 12 months, you're already hitting six figures. Freaking crazy. What was your strategy in building <laughs> that out? Like, honestly, it's like your first month out of the gate. Most people worry about not having orders and you guys right. just have orders pouring in. Like, how did that pick up? I think there, well, so it's a little bit twofold. One is that, um, Chris had already had uh, kind of, I guess he had a network in the fitness community. And although you don't think of brownies and cookies and these indulgent treats, you don't think about, yeah, like fitness people eat this, what? And actually before I met Chris, I had no idea that bodybuilders and figure competitors and that whole community indulge in this sort of thing. And so when I first met him and he was ordering these treats. I'm like, what do you eat this kind of stuff? And you have a six pack? How is this happening? So um, I think that helped to already know kind of how to appeal to that community. Um, and just because we love it ourselves too, we knew kind of how to do the social media portion, which I think was our biggest, I mean, it still is. Social media is, is what has helped us, Instagram especially. Um, and so I think that was one thing. And then the other thing, um, which is still on the, fitness portion is we sponsored a local fitness competition show. And so we were the exclusive baker. So we would travel around to San Diego, Vegas, Los Angeles, to all the shows with them. And so that gave us an instant market, not only at the shows, but for competitors. And then it, it kind of gave us a name and some credibility. And we started that just a few months after we, I mean, we're just still figuring out the business and mm -hmm. now we're traveling around, you know, uh, with these shows. So I think those two things really, <clears throat> started us like running as yeah. soon as we and, had and product to add on to that i think too one thing is uh we were never willing to let quality slip um so i think we weren't necessarily great marketers um but we had a great product and so we had to figure out okay if we can maintain the quality of our product uh word of mouth will, will be some um and i think that uh the evolution of our of our business has been such that if you were to see some of the first posts we did on Instagram, <laughs> yeah. and things are terrible. And you know, <laughs> uh, like learning food photography has been very helpful and kind of learning your market, um, the, the ages of people that are purchasing a product, the, the gender, um, and then appealing to that to the masses that are actually your your customers. Like, what do they want to see? What kinds of posts are doing well? Which ones are not? Um, and, and we learned from that. Took some you know, online photography classes, things like that, and then eventually we'll get to the point where you know, your, your posts are going to have a lot of engagement um, and you know kind of what your audience is looking for. You know what? Part. You guys unpacked a really big part of like business foundation in what you just shared. Okay. First of all, being able to really pinpoint your target market is exactly. really key, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people mistaken that because a lot of people that has an idea with a product really comes from internal, not external not about the validation of what people are liking and actually willing to take their wallet out and pay for. Um, mm -hmm. And it's very, very egoistic to think that what we want is what other people want. So for right. you guys, being able to identify your target market so early on within your career is, is definitely a really smart move on your end. And actually, you guys innately did that without, I'm not sure if, if it's innate or it's just because you have been in business for a while as well. Um, but that's a very, very smart move, um, being able to understand that. And the second part is really trusting your product. That is so, so awesome because it, it really is because a lot of people are good at marketing, but then yet their product fail. They over promise and under deliver. Mm -hmm. But for you guys, knowing your customers and then over delivering uh, mm -hmm. and really trusting and holding that line of great products and knowing your target audience is so key when creating 
a business product market fit. Third thing that I really want to applaud you guys on is that you guys continue to invest in yourself to learn. When you see something that, oh, this is important, you guys invested in course for food photography because it's important you're investing back in yourself, which a lot of people are not willing to do because once again, it really comes from themselves. They think they know everything and it's like, hey, you know what? I don't need help. They don't ask for help. Um, and it's just really, really tough um, to build a business um, when you don't ask for help. And myself, I'm involved in so many different mentorship and mastermind programs, always continually improving myself, my trade, uh, and just being having like the industry know how. Um, and that's the reason why I feel like you guys are, are so good at what you guys are doing. Being able to grow into 10,000 followers in under a year is, is a massive achievement. And that six figure business that you guys are able to build, insane, awesome stuff. <laughs> Share a little you. bit more about the the growth of your followers and and share more about the marketing tactics knowing the fact that you guys are going on trade shows um all over town sponsoring that how did you grow your marketing we actually uh for a good bit of the time for the first six months we didn't really know what we we're doing so most of the growth probably came in the, the first 12 months of your business the last six months of that first 12 month period is where uh we we're had tremendous clicked, growth yeah, yeah um we didn't have any idea about reaching out to influencers to promote your product, things like that. Um, we didn't know about sponsoring posts or anything like that. Um, and so, how do we? I mean, we just kind of figured out early on a few influencers reached out to us, and that's what kind of opened our eyes to oh, wow, if we can find these influencers with high followers, but not just followers, it's the engaged followers. Mm -hmm. So we would look through their profiles and see, okay, if you're posting this photo, how many people are commenting and what are, you know, why are you an influencer that we want to be a part of? And also what's your content? Are you, our motto is spread love, eat brownies. So spread love is, it's super important to mm -hmm. us to build a community of people who are do-gooders, like just good people. Yeah. And so we wanted to make sure that the people that we reached out to or that reached out to us for collaborations weren't just wanting free product one or, you know, not going to promote us in the way we wanted. So once we hit our first maybe, what, 10 or so influencers and we saw the response and like, you know, watching somebody who has, you know, who's maybe Insta famous or, or whatnot, eat something of ours and just be blown away. It was like, oh my God, this is not only, it's fun, it's validating, but you know, as we started doing that, more and more followers, more and more engagement. So we kind of just started with the first 10 and realized like, okay, this is for sure something we need to do. And then from there, it was just, I think, one, seeing what worked and starting it, but mm -hmm. also listening to podcasts, mm -hmm. reading things on just blogs about, you know, um, giveaways and social media and engagement. Because again, this was new to both of us. We hadn't done mm -hmm. any business with um, any social media, anything mm -hmm. like that. So, so I think that's kind of how it started. Yeah, I think just learning, um, like even things simple as like hashtagging, right. when to post, like if you look at your metrics, like when do your posts get the most uh, views and engagement, things like that. Um, and like even things, simple things like geotagging, things like that. And then um, with the influencers, giveaways were huge. And obviously you wanna find influencers that have engagement with your type of product. Like if someone is, I don't know, it, we had an influencer like hundreds of thousands of followers, but he was a car guy. We decided to, you know, give him uh, some of our product. You didn't see much of a return on that. And then you have an influencer who's an actual in the, in the food space who has maybe 15 or 20,000 followers, which is significantly less. You give them some product and all of a sudden you've got a thousand, thousand extra followers that are interested in what you have to offer. Right. So I think just, you know, like I said, knowing your market, Trial and error. the big yeah. thing is just um, over delivering, like you said, and we were at the very small um, at, at the start, no one had heard of us. and. Then when they tried our products, definitely, I think they were they were a believer after that. And I think a lot of it comes down to you've got to have a solid product. Yeah, I love that. Um, till date, how many influencers have you guys been work uh, partnered with so far? Ooh, a lot. Just, just a ballpark. In the hundreds for sure. I think so yeah. We have a, a core group. So something that we have is an affiliate program now, mm -hmm. um, and so we have paid ambassadors. So you know, um, in exchange for a, you know, specific code for them, obviously they get uh, commissions. So of those was very small kind of select group. We purposely keep it small. We have, I think 300 applications and wow. of those 300, we took only 10. So we're very, again, very selective. We want to make sure it's that loving spread love mm -hmm. kind of motto that they're doing, but outside of, 
the paid ones, we've probably reached out, I would say to about 200 influencers. Some of them we every so often we'll just randomly include them again. So it's not just a one-time thing. If they do well, if their photos are good, their content's good, then we're like, oh, we really like them. We keep sending um, product their way and they're more than happy to, you know, do all of it just in exchange for our product. So that's awesome. Yeah. And to kind of piggyback on that, like another little kind of cliche thing is your vibe attracts your tribe. Like she said, yeah. you've got a core group of maybe five to 10 people that every month we'll send product to that we know just, we call them our fam. Yeah. Um, so like short for family and they're just always happy to be a part of what we're doing. Um, have the same kind of attitude towards business and life. Um, and just the people, I guess like it would be called like a ride or die. Like these are our, these are our people. Um, they go hard for us. We go hard for them. And I know that, uh, like you, the whole thing is you don't need everyone to love you. Just a few of the right people. And that I think makes all the difference in the world. Totally. Thank you so much for sharing all these gems. You guys are so willing to just be authentic of your whole journey because uh, something that I really want to highlight is that you guys were not afraid to reach out. It's like not afraid mm -hmm. of the, getting the nose because quite frankly, a lot of uh, people that I consult with, they, they understand, they hear about all these strategies, but the fear of getting the no really... Pro, like allows them to procrastinate. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to figure out my product. I'm going to figure out this. I'm going to figure out everything before reaching out. And they really delay that process. But being able to actually reach out to influencers, being able to have the guts to receive that, that's really number one thing, right? Mm -hmm. and the second thing is that not a lot of people would understand the importance of choosing influencers that align with your own value. This is something that I always, always preach. Never do business with people you don't like, let alone for your ambassadors yeah. that are speaking so highly of you. And if it's transactional, mm -hmm. what's good does it come out of it? There's no good that comes out of it. Mm -hmm. You must connect and align yourself with the right group of people. That's when you can connect with them. That's when your business can explode in revenue. Right. Um, so definitely encompasses uh, a lot of the theories that I, everything that I preach when I built my ice cream business is same thing. So really, really spot on there. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. And I know you guys do a little bit more now. Uh, you guys have your own show that you guys have in, on your Instagram. Uh, pretty fun <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about that show. Oh gosh. So... I mean, it started with just, the thing is that we just, we love eating our treats and we only really get to eat them when we have new releases. We, we try to be as restricted, otherwise we'll be in some trouble. <laughs> but, um, so the fir very first time we decided to go on and film, we did it and we don't really edit much at, or at all. At we all. just, it's like <laughs> yeah. a one, one take and we're there. And so it's all very much just us. Like if you were to hang out with us just across the table eating, brownies that's exactly what you get we're silly we're kind of all over the place yeah. mm -hmm. and it's it's our relationship is exactly what you see that's how we are we're just kind of silly and we like to eat <laughs> so um so we said let's go for it let's just try let's film one we posted it and it's i think that thing you're talking about being courageous because it's kind of like oh my gosh this is, uh, it's mortified. pretty embarrassing yeah, and i'm like you know what just post it you know this is us this is who we are and our response off of our first one was so great people were you know, we didn't really get much hate, you know, haters per se, as you would might think maybe, or I guess maybe what we thought. It was all love, just people like thinking it was funny and they're like, oh, we can't wait for these videos. So now it just became something that we do every month. Uh, uh, we kind of dress up for each Yeah, for we decided to one, yeah, for, for Halloween, like, hey, we should wear some Halloween costumes for the Halloween video. And we did, and that got some good response. I'm like, what if we just start doing it every month? We'll just, whatever the theme of our yeah. limited release is, we'll just do something goofy like that. And it's like, now we have people like, I can't wait for these videos. <laughs> I love watching the videos. And like she said, when we first were gonna post it, I was like, there's no way we can't post it. This is terrible, I can't do this. <laughs> I was like, just close your eyes and post yeah, it. And so we did, and it's been uh, yeah. So now uh, every, a good part of it. Yeah. yeah, every month you can look forward to whatever flavors we're releasing. We try to release the taste test about a week or so before to kind of give people a, a teaser, not only just photos, because like when we used to order treats from other companies, you don't really know what you're, I mean, you see pictures of it, but you don't really get to see the experience. So this way you kind of get to see it exactly like, like in our hands, like how big is it? How giant is my bite that I'm taking? Yeah. Um, so you can kind of get an idea and like, 
get that food porny kind of like, oh my gosh, that thing's huge. So it's a lot of fun. We look forward to it every month for sure. I love it. It's so, uh, the reason why it works is because you guys are so authentic, truly. Like I, I think if you guys are trying to be something else that you're trying to model off the internet it just doesn't work it's going to become cringy but you guys when you guys do it it's like it's a relationship you guys are having fun and it's super authentic and truly <laughs> why people love it so much is because you guys are real like it, 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 yeah. it's the reason why and that's the reason why i really wanted to support you guys as well because i'm like dude these guys are real they're trying to make a buck and they're trying to make a name and, and a brand <laughs> yeah. doing that so definitely really. on that um for the people that want to follow your journey uh, and reach out and actually order some of these big, like great stuff from you guys, <laughs> how can they find you, follow you and support you? Yeah. So on Instagram, we're at West Coast Confection. We have a website to order through, which is westcoastconfection.com. We're also on Facebook with West Coast Confection and then here and there for local um, customers, we do some farmers markets around San Diego, northern and central San Diego. So, um, and then we also stock actually in a couple of gyms here in San Diego as well. Um, so the gym in Vista, and then at six one nine Muscle, which is in the gym in Pacific Beach. Yeah, awesome. The best way is probably Instagram. You're gonna find all of it there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And you guys ship uh, internationally or nationally only? Both. 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 Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So yeah. people yeah. really want to try it out uh, and yeah, definitely go order from them. So thank you so much for sharing um, your basically secret to success. So far, I can't really wait to uh, get caught up with you guys in a year's time and see you guys um, blow up. Like really, yeah. really I think it's, it's going to happen. And um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Any last words for our listeners? I would say, uh, well, thank you for your time. We appreciate Absolutely. the opportunity to be here. And uh, like, I guess the, the one thing that we kind of say is just, you know, leave people and things better than you found them, be good to other people and spread lovey brownies. That's kind of how we sign it off every time. Yeah. Spread lovey brownies. Sign off. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.